Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Kayla, otherwise known as Let's Get Knit Faced here on YouTube and over on Instagram if you want to give me a follow there. And welcome to my channel if you are new here. We do some knitting and crocheting content and it's been a while. I had been wanting to get a tutorial out to you guys all winter for some fingerless mittens and the footage took me a little bit longer to get together than expected, so that's why you're getting it now. So it may no longer be winter where you are from, but if that's the case, maybe you can make them now and then you'll be all ready for next season. Um, but these mittens, I really love the way that they turned out. They're very beginner friendly. They're mostly made in a single crochet, and then I incorporated the loop stitch at the top for some fun texture. And yeah, the yarn that I used for these mittens is by a company called Hobie Yarn, and they actually gifted me a couple different kinds of their yarn for me to try out and then share with you guys in a review. So that will be included in this video along with the full pattern for the mitten in multiple different sizes. So that will be listed in the description. So depending on which size you're making, pay attention to those numbers, but the techniques in the video should all be the same and apply no matter what. Hobie is a Copenhagen-based yarn company that sells yarn to people all over the world and has really expansive options as you can see on their website. They have really great options at the budget end of the scale using like acrylic and more man-made fibers all the way up to really nice luxurious natural fibers that are dyed in really really pretty colors and you can see that with each yarn selection you also have access to reviews of past customers who have tried this and they also link very nicely for you the patterns um, that are available using this yarn and I think that's super helpful because you can just kind of find a yarn that you like and then also find a project that you like. They also sell um, crochet hooks and needles and all the accessories that you could need. In addition to their free patterns, there also is Hobie Plus, which is a paid subscription type service that allows you to have access to even more patterns from designers all over the world for one flat monthly rate. There also is a bingo app, which allows you to play a weekly bingo game with other knitters and crocheters to get access to more deals and gain more points in the hobby universe. A little bit more about the specific yarn I used in these mittens. The base is worked up in a yarn called Fluffy Day, and this is a 100% brushed acrylic yarn, but it is very strange because it seems high quality enough that it is actually like a mohair mix of some kind, and you'll see that it is pretty fibrous and has a lot of good texture in there. Um, this blue is also really beautiful. I got this sent to me. In addition to the white, the white slash ivory is color 02, and then the blue is color 08. And I really, really like the way that this turned out in the mitten. I think it would also make a really great hat or scarf because it offers like that warm texture without being itchy. I feel like sometimes those acrylic styles get really itchy and kind of feel cheap, but this does not feel cheap. And then the real star of these mittens is totally this mohair that is at the top. This is called the Diablo, and it is a mix of acrylic, mohair, and then a different kind of man-made yarn. And I also have it in white, so I was gonna make like the reverse, but we all know how I was on time with this project. And I really, really love how thin this is. This is super, super thin mohair, and you can see like in the, um, in the loops how thin it is. Um, so you would have to be careful about like snagging stuff on these, but it offers like a really, really fun and unique mitten. So this white is in the color 02, very unique with their names. And then the Diablo is in 03. Um, and they have a million different colors of all of these kinds of yarns, but this one just really stuck out to me as being super fun. And then the last yarn that they sent to me was actually this really beautiful tweed that I went and made another mitten out of. And this is called Tweed Delight. And this is in the color 15. And it has all these different colored flecks in here. And you can see this isn't finished, but it also makes a really beautiful mitten. Um, and this is using the exact same pattern as this one, but I just didn't add the loop stitch. I actually added like a different, so you can see this is all single crochet and then the top is in double crochet. Um, but this also works up really well in mitten format. I think it would make a beautiful hat um, or something like that. So yeah, that's kind of my review for the Hobie yarn. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. 
I'm going to be using a size G crochet hook or a 4.25 millimeter crochet hook for these. You could use obviously a different yarn, but try to get the gauge that I list in the description to um, make sure that these turn out okay. Um, I Like I said, I'm going to be listing the pattern in the description and it will be listed in a couple different sizes there. I'm going to be making the smaller size, um, which is what fit me and my measurements so that is what i'm going to be working up with but like follow along and replace the numbers that are in the description for the size that you're using um, for what i'm talking about here okay so i think we are good to get started i'm going to start off by making a slip knot and placing that on my hook so i'm just going to cross over my yarn here and then go ahead pinch through grab the yarn and then place that on my hook um, to begin we are going to want to tighten up that and then just chain 36 stitches. And this is going to be more towards the wrist area of the hand, um, part of the mitten, and we're going to start there. And I'm just chaining stitches um, a little bit tighter because I want to make sure that I'm not going to have any gaps in this first row and everything's gonna start off looking clean. So I'm just gonna chain 36 stitches. Okay, so now we have all 36 stitches ready to go, and this first part's super easy. We're just gonna connect these into a circle and then work up, and it's gonna be very easy. We don't even have any turning chains. We're just working one stitch after another. But first, we have to work this first row, and I'm just going to find my first loop um, from where I had that on the hook with the slip knot, and I'm just gonna work into the top loop of that like so, and then I'm going to connect this circle with a slip stitch. So that just means I'm going to yarn over, grab my yarn, pull through the one loop, connecting, and then pull through the last chain that I had on my hook and tighten that up just a little bit. And now my work is connected and I'm ready to do this first row, which might be the hardest, just cause you gotta be sure that you're working into the right loop. And then after that, super easy for about like 20 rows. Um, so we're just gonna be working a very basic single crochet stitch. And I just wanna pick um, the top loop here and make sure that this isn't really getting twisted as I'm working around and then I'm always making sure to work into kind of the same stitch. So here you can see that there are pairs of loops that are kind of forming a circle as we go and I just want to work into this one because it's next. I want to be careful not to split my yarn and then I'm gonna single crochet so I'm gonna yarn over pull through and then I'm gonna yarn over and pull through the two loops that are on my hook. And then I'm gonna move to the next one. And I'm working into the top loop, yarning over, pulling through, yarning over, pulling through for a single crochet. And then this gap is what we were trying to kind of avoid. So if you notice that as you're working through and you're getting big gaps, you might wanna start over and rechain a little bit tighter. Um, but this should, that size gap will work itself out as you work along. Just make sure that those aren't too big. And I'm gonna keep working this way into each stitch into the top loop. And I'm gonna work this way all the way around. So go ahead and pause, catch up with me, and then um, I'll meet you back at the beginning. Okay, I'm back at the beginning where we have our slip knot and I just kind of wanted to show this last stitch here. And there is two loops now here that I can begin working into kind of like a normal single crochet, which is what we're going to start working once we connect. So I have the two loops and I'm just going to yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through. And now I can start working in normal single crochets. And since we are working in like a fully formed circle now, we're just gonna keep working these one after another until you work up kind of how long you want your mitten to be and to cover your wrist for. Totally up to you. I did about two and a half inches. So you see now I'm working 
back as like my second row and this is just going to get easier as you keep going so you want to make sure that you're catching each stitch and you're just working one to one single crochets and this is going to form the body of the mitten so like I said it's about two and a half maybe three inches here and then you're going to pause and we're gonna regroup for how we're gonna start shaping the thumb. But go ahead, you can make this shorter if you want, you can make it much longer, but um, mine kind of fits uh, just about like the end of my wrist, maybe a little bit longer, because I wanted a lot of coverage. You want it to like go up your coat maybe. Um, totally up to you, but that is what we're going to work back. And then once you're done, we will start on the thumb. Okay, now we have the body of our mitten all worked up and we are ready to start making the shape for the thumb hole. And this is just going to involve some increases um, that we're gonna stagger every other row. But basically, I know it might be hard to tell exactly where the beginning of the round is. It's, it's not super important. I think I, for example, went a couple stitches over, but what I would do is just try to line it up and follow the stitch line and just have a best guess of where you think the beginning of the round is. And then um, I have a stitch marker here, but you could use really anything that um, could stick in here, um, like another spare piece of yarn in a different color or something like that. And I just want to place that where I think the beginning of the round is. These are nice because you can actually put them like a row below um, where we are. So I'm going to actually do that. This is not as easy to move as it is in knitting where you could just kind of slip it across the needles, but I don't think we'll have to move it as long as it's kind of like, as we work up, it'll still be close enough that we can tell. This doesn't have to be exact again, we're just using it as like a rough marker for um, our increases. So what I want to do is I want to work one stitch single crocheted after the beginning of the round marker. And then in the next stitch, I want to work two single crochets into the same stitch. So I just worked one single crochet and now I'm going to work back into the same stitch and work another one. So there's two in one and I just increased by one stitch. Then we're going to continue working super easily around the piece, just in plain single crochet, working one stitch to one stitch, nothing crazy. And um, I will meet you back at the end of the row. I'm gonna hold off until I have one stitch left and then I'll show you what we're gonna do there. Now I am back at the end of the row. I have one stitch left until I'm back at my beginning of the round marker. And here I'm just going to do another increase. So I'm gonna work one single crochet into that last stitch, and then I'm gonna work another single crochet into the same stitch. So I just increased by a stitch there and then a stitch at the beginning for a total of two stitches increased or now I have 38 stitches. Um, and this marker is going to help you remember that stitch in between, right? Cause we skipped one, we just worked one plane and then we increased, we worked around and then we increased. So there's one normal stitch in between the two increased stitches and this marker is supposed to denote that. So we just remember. And you can use that in any way that you want, or if you can tell and you just remember as you work around, you can see here, these are my increases here. So I know I have one in between and then I need to increase here. So there's also that way of doing it if you can just read your crocheting and then um, remember to place that there. And now in between, so this was an increased row, now we just want to work another row, plain single crocheting all the way around. So this should be pretty easy. You don't have to pay attention to anything as you do this. Um, just remember to stop once you get back to the beginning of the round, but we're going to work now one row of plain old single crochet. And we're gonna do this in between each increase row. So this pattern is going to continue, but we're always gonna separate the increase row with a row of single crochet. So I'll be back once I'm done. 
I am back at the beginning, at my beginning of round marker two, and I was careful to make sure that I worked a single crochet into each of my increases. You don't wanna accidentally skip over one because then you wouldn't have actually increased. Um, and now I'm ready to work another increased row. So to start off, I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before. Uh, the first stitch is going to be just a plain single crochet. And then I want to work two single crochets into the one stitch in the second um, spot in the row. So there's one, I'm gonna work back in and work a second single crochet into that same hole. And you're gonna notice this area will start to pucker up. That's because we want it to increase. We want to have space for our thumb to go in there. So um, that'll be happening as we work this up. And because I just increased, now I'm good to just single crochet all the way around until I get to the last stitch. So these um, become pretty easy because most of the time we are still just plain old single crocheting. Very simple. Um, we just don't wanna forget to increase those two stitches every other row. So I will let you know when I'm back at the end of the row. And now I'm back and I have one stitch left in this row before I'm back at my beginning of the row marker. I can see that here's where I increased um, in the previous row. And so I can also tell that way by that's where I need to be. Again, this doesn't have to be super exact. If there's two stitches in here by accident, one row instead of one, you won't be able to tell. This is a pretty forgiving pattern. Um, so just make sure you get two increases around this area for each increase row and it should come out looking okay. So I'm going to do one and I wanna go back to the same hole and do another. And that is my second increase row. So now because I started with 36, then I had 38, now I should have 40 stitches. And I'm good to just work another row of single crochet. And this is really how we're going to keep working until for this size, I wanna make sure I have 48 stitches. Um, so I just wanna keep working and making sure that this is starting to build out. You can see we're starting to get shape for our thumb to fit in there comfortably. And um, for the other sizes, pay attention in the description for how many you should be working up. And then we should all arrive at the same place um, when we're ready to separate these stitches to form um, the actual thumb and then the rest of the, the mitten for the rest of your fingers. So I'm gonna work this up off camera. It's going to be the same pattern, increase row and then normal row. Just check in the description for, yeah, the numbers that you should be doing for your size. And then we'll meet back here to finish the thumb. Okay, I'm back now that I've finished all of my increases for our thumb hole. And I also did another three rows after that. And now I'm ready just to try this on to make sure that everything is going to fit me personally. This is something that you should do just in case your hand maybe is a little longer than I'm accounting for or something like that. And um, you can make sure that this is perfect ready to fit you. So you want this to be above kind of this joint here so that we can, we know that we're ready to close this off because that's gonna be the next step. So if say this is a little bit lower on you where you want it to lay and where it feels comfortable, you might wanna work up a couple more rows than I've accounted for in the pattern. But um, I feel like I'm ready just with how this is laying on my hand to close this off and then I'm going to build up the thumb um, next, so once you know that you're ready to go after our, our increases and then a few rows of just normal single crocheting, you should be at the beginning of round, right? Our marker might still be way lower here. So this is just kind of how I'm writing it up to work. But basically, once you're at the beginning of the round, you're going to work eight stitches of single crochet. So you're gonna keep working down the row for eight stitches, and this will kind of get us over to half of the thumb stitches that we just made. So let's see, that's eight, and you see, now I'm kind of working back along this space here, 
that we just made. I want to count backwards from that point 16 stitches so that I have eight on the back end so that ideally we're picking up all these stitches. It might not be perfect based off of like maybe you're not exactly at the beginning of the round. It won't matter, um, but this is just like a good guide if you feel like you're at this crease, work eight stitches. You know, if you're working in the size that I'm making, obviously pay attention to the amount of stitches that'll be linked, that'll be listed in the description. But I'm gonna count backwards, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And that's gonna be where I wanna connect this thumb. So I'm gonna put my hook through that stitch um, now I have my, my thumb stitches ready to go and I'm just gonna do a slip stitch. So this is basically just pulling this yarn, I'm yarning over and I'm pulling through. Oh. I'm yarning over, I'm pulling through those two hooks and I'm yarning over and I'm pulling through the one that's on my hook and that is going to connect those stitches. So this is also, you could pull through and try it on again, just to make sure everything's gonna be fitting you right. And I can see that this is fitting really well. Um, if you're working on like your second glove, you wanna hold them up to one another just to make sure that this is looking the same. Make sure you didn't accidentally do like four rows for one glove, six rows for another, you just wanna make sure. But this is feeling good and comfortable, so I am ready to work up the thumb. And it'll be pretty easy, you don't have to break your yarn. What we're going to do is just flip this over. I wanna make sure everything's nice and tight so that we don't have any gaps. And you're just gonna keep working single crochets. And um, I'm going to make sure that this is nice and tight. And I believe on my other glove, I worked for about three rows. So I just wanna make sure that I am replicating that here. So I can see that this is where I connected and I worked for three rows, that's what I put in the pattern and then I'm gonna break my yarn. So that is going to be how we're gonna work up the thumb. If you have longer fingers, you can work for a longer amount of rows. This is up to you. If you have a shorter thumb, you can work for less, but you just want to build this up now that my thumb is done and I've cut my yarn, I'm ready to reattach to start to build up the other part of our fingerless gloves. And I just wanna connect this yarn just with like a slip stitch into this first stitch here. And I'm going to put my hook under the two, two loops for that stitch, like so. And then I'm going to just yarn over, pull through. Um, make sure I have a good amount of a tail here. And I'm gonna get ready to just basically start crocheting and work under those two loops. And as I do that, I just wanna hold this taut and single crochet. And that's how I connect um, it's very simple to reconnect your yarn there. And then I'm just gonna work back around creating a little bit more of a tube in this part. And I am going to work for just three rows all the way around um, in single crochet. And then I'm gonna start working in this beautiful mohair that I talked about that I just love the colors in. And I'm gonna connect this and I'm not going to be detaching this yarn, but just starting to work this in. So if you want to do this loop stitch that's coming up in the yarn that you're working in, in your body yarn, that is totally possible too. You can do the same thing. Um, if you don't wanna include like a mohair accent, um, the same rules will apply. So let me finish up these three rows and you catch up with me and then we will start working in the loops. Okay, I am ready to go. I have my rows worked up and I just checked to make sure that my mittens are looking identical and the length is the same just so I know I'm on the right track. And now I'm ready to add in this beautiful loop stitch. I'm so excited. I love the way that this looks. So I am 
back where I started, right, because we connected over here, so that's where I know that my beginning of round is, if not exactly. And I don't wanna break my yarn, but I'm gonna grab my accent yarn, and I want the working yarn over here to match the working yarn over here. Um, and then I'm just gonna work one or two single crochets just to get this to be secure. And now I'm all set. And this also looks really cute. I love the way that the white mixed with like this, this fun color pattern looks held together. So that's some inspo for some design later on. But um, now, to work the loop stitch, this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go through this slow for a couple of times, and you're only doing this for three full rows, so it is kind of like an intensive stitch, but um, you only need to do it for three rows. So I'm going to put my hook through the loop as if to single crochet, and then I'm going to drop both strands of yarn, and I'm basically only going to pick up the mohair, the accent yarn, I'll call it, and I'm going to have it in my hand like this. So it's over my finger with the back, with the, the, the piece closest to um, my mitten on the front of my finger and then the back of my finger. And I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to grab this, this side first. I'm going to go like this and then grab this side and pull through. And this is going to have now two strands of the accent yarn, the white yarn, and then another strand of the accent yarn. And then I'm going to take this loop on my finger and I'm going to pull it towards the front of the piece. And then I'm just going to tighten, there's a lot of steps, I'm just going to tighten this with the working piece. So I want this loop, you can make them as big or as little as you want, but I just want them to all be the same size. You could also make the choice to make them all different sizes. I think that could be cute too. Play into the asymmetry. But now that it's the size that I want it to be, it's about a finger length, or a, you know the width of my finger, I'm going to single crochet as normal. So I'm gonna yarn over and pull through both of the loops on my, on my hook. And um, then that should secure this and we're ready to work our next one. I, I'm working them one after another. So here it is again. I'm going to work into these two loops, drop my yarn, only grab the accent yarn and have it set up on my finger like so. I'm going to flip my hook over basically, pull through the first and then pull through the second while I'm twisting. So now I have one, two of the strands on my hook. I'm going to pull that through those two loops. So you can see I'm pulling those, and now I have, I have those two loops on my hook, the white and then the other accent from before. I'm gonna take the loop, bring it to the front, tighten it up so that it's the right size about there, looks good to me. And then I'm going to hold that with my thumb while I work the rest of the single crochet. So I'm gonna yarn over, pull through everything on my hook. And that is my second loop. And you can see they're coming together. And you just wanna make sure that as you're working, you don't skip any single crochets. You wanna get this out of the way. And I can see, oh, I just worked into that one. So here is my next stitch. And that is the start of our loop stitch. So it does take a little bit of time for each stitch and you'll notice that the yarn does kind of get a little bit twisted as you're working. So it's good to stop maybe every fifth stitch and make sure that these aren't all twisting together and getting tangled. But that is going to be how we're going to work this first row. Now that my first row of the loop stitch is done, what I'm going to do is just work a normal row of single crochet holding both of the strands. So there's no need to disconnect the accent yarn. What I did over here is just work one row of the planes. You can see that peeking through and I love the way that that looks. And then I stacked another row of loop stitch on top of that. And then another row of the plain single crocheting and then finish with the loop row so that um, you get those right at the top of the glove or the mitten and then I love the way that this edge looks so clean and crisp and you can see the white again. 
So I did three rows total, alternating with the single crochet. So that is how we're going to finish this up. Obviously, if you want to include more of this, feel free to. And yeah, so once that's done, just go ahead, cut your yarn, weave in your ends, and that will take us to the end of these mittens. Well guys, how did it go? Do we have some finished mittens? If you made it this far and you have some finished mittens, please send me a picture on Instagram. I would love to see, even if it's just a progress pic, or especially if you have a question, just shoot me a DM on Instagram. Um, and I think that's it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe below for some more content. Thank you so much to Hobie for gifting me this yarn to try out and make these wonderful mittens with. I really love the way that they turned out and I hope that you do too. And yeah, I think the next video I'm gonna make is actually gonna be for another bucket hat. We all know I love bucket hats. Um, so I feel like that should be coming soon. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.